Hi everybody. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, I don't even have coffee. Well, we'll have to do without it. So uh, I don't know if anybody's interested in this, but I thought Shane Isaac, Sh Shane Isaac, how do you pronounce it? I don't know. <coughs> he has uh, released one new video and it's eight minutes long. So I thought we'd check it out and see what he says. Um, it's called, why doesn't Earth 2 have any 3D gameplay yet? And if you're curious, then go to my YouTube channel and see my previous comments, I guess. So let, let's just see what he has to say. Hey guys. Hey guys. Hi. Hope you're doing well. A common question that comes up is that why isn't there any 3D gameplay on Earth 2 yet and when games? So a lot of people are curious about this. And um, are they? Because I've like they have stated like many times that it's um, it's different phases and the first phase is selling tiles and the, I think that's the stage we are in and then they're gonna have resources uh, on those tiles you can mine them and stuff and sell them and stuff <laughs> and that sounds like sort of a civilization game to me. And I don't really understand, like, if you're going to build that, why don't you just continue building on that? Uh, and, like, not saying it's going to be something different in the future. Because it's, it's quite confusing. But let's see what he says. And I thought I'd just like to share some thoughts with you on why there isn't any 3D gameplay as yet and also a little bit of background and history on how we got to this stage. Uh, also, uh, 3D gameplay can also be like a top-down view where you watch... I'm sorry, I'm playing with... It. You close bags with it. <laughs> That's why I'm waving it around. <laughs> okay, so it could be said that SimCity is a 3D game because it is, because you can turn the camera around. So it doesn't have to be like first person uh, to be 3D, just to be clear here. Try to make this brief. Now, there's no 3D gameplay yet. Neighbors. <laughs> they are installing, um, I don't even know what to call it. They're, they're getting their uh, outdoor area downstairs uh, glassed in <coughs> and apparently that involves a lot of drilling. Because Earth 2 is a little bit different from your average game. We set out to create a very accurate one-to-one -one replication of the actual planet Earth, which is... Yes, uh, and I've been thinking about this, like if you're gonna have a map that big, uh, then first person does not make any sort of sense in a if you're gonna design a game on that. Because even if you have like the entire Earth's population, like I walked to the store yesterday, I met like 10 people, and it's it's half an hour to go there <laughs> so so um first person yeah it would be cool but there will be so many areas where you're just uh playing all alone and that would suit me because i like to play games alone i don't like other people to come in and do their thing when i'm doing my thing i played world of warcraft alone <laughs> <laughs> I just went around alone in the wilderness killing things and skinning them and crafting and selling it on the auction house. Uh, yeah, and people would tell me to learn to play your claws, which I refused to do. So uh, that's what I did. Um, but you know what? where you can also get that experience to play alone and not get bothered by other players? Single player games. You don't need a big map to do that. You just need to have your own instance of the game on your computer. So, um, but if you want to meet a lot of people, that that's why you play a multiplayer game, right? Or at least you want to, like some 
some way to anyway for me if i was designing a game that would have like this massive big map i would make it a strategy game uh i would i might do like for for extra funsies okay you can plop a, a little man down and you can walk around first person but th that's like frivolous stuff that i just added just because it would be cool like <laughs> just to see what you have built like from a different angle and different perspective and stuff but i would like the main gameplay i would like build on what they already have and uh, just like you can build buy land sell land mine on it build put buildings uh transportation would be cool probably uh and then be able to zoom out and and see heat maps of different things in large areas like that's the only way it makes sense to have a map that big <laughs> for me that's how i think maybe you have a different opinion <laughs> it's very difficult to achieve in itself especially if you're going to have it yeah 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 I, it's it's different difficult to achieve but why are you doing it like when i think of game ideas that i want to do when i I'm, I'm not a game developer, I'm just starting out. I, I think it's very fun to think about stuff like this, but I haven't actually achieved anything. I want to make that very clear. I'm not saying I'm any sort of ex expert. This is just my thoughts on it, whatever you think of them, if they are uh, value of value to anyone. Anyway, so when I think of like game ideas, I, I start to think like, what would I, want to play and what would be fun and i almost never think that oh what if you could do this cool like what what if i could do this technically that it would be really hard to do um just because something is hard to do doesn't necessarily mean it will be fun to play with it when you're done i have made lots and lots of things that is so fun to make i made if you it, i'm sure it's broken now because i haven't gone there for ages but if you go to dreamhorse.se you will see a web game that i made uh and it, it, uh, let me tell you it was so fun to make i had so much fun <laughs> but i don't even like to play it because it's boring as hell but uh, it simulates an uh, economic systems uh, system in the background of uh, pharmaceutical companies battling the diseases that the horses can get is that fun for the player hell no <laughs> it's not fun but it was really fun to program <laughs> So see, uh, and it took me a, a while and I had lots of fun, but then when I was done, I was like, here it is, I'm done with this now, I'm gonna go uh, play Sims. <laughs> so, just a note on that. Who is messaging me? Yet? Okay. load and perform in a performant way where it's going to stream places of the earth very quickly to the player. So for us, this was really the first goal. This was the first thing that we needed to achieve to pull. First off, um, you're, you said in your other video uh, here, Dear earth to like this is a model that uh, I keep getting back to this because it's such a good source of uh, reference of what you're saying that you're going to create. Uh, this is a water tower, a water processor, and this is one of the buildings you're going to give the players. And that means that you don't have to stream like the whole model to the player, like fast or so anything. The only thing you need to tell uh, the client is that it's it's a water press processor. Here are the colors. Uh, so <laughs> this could be like building number one. 
that's all you need to t tell the client if you can know that that it's a water processor. That's like one byte of data. And then what colors it has, like if we have like four areas that could be recolored. Uh, so you need to send an RGB code for each of those and also the met metallicness and the other word that I keep forgetting. Uh, it's not a huge chunk of data to to tell the client and uh, you can't play a game unless you have the client so uh, you're not you're not sending the whole thing and probably you only send like the height map data no you don't need to do that because uh, it's based on the real earth like right so that, that could already be in the client so that shouldn't be needed to be streamed from any server and <laughs> and also the biomes if they change or not i don't i don't know that um but maybe it, there are smart ways to send data over you don't have to send every polygon over that's the point you you just send it's building number one there <laughs> here's the coordinates here's here are the colors Free, free advice for you, Shane. If you do, if you didn't know that, then what are you doing? <laughs> he obviously he knows that already. We could even look at three D gameplay, and as many people this have publicly loud. claimed, this. Uh, I realized I didn't do the sound test. I don't know. This is not an easy thing to achieve in itself. And another thing to consider is that we're only 16 months old. We're not even a year and a half into this. And well, I stand corrected. I was saying they had been uh, developing for uh, two years because they started in uh, in 2020. Could you stop? <laughs> I don't know. Um. Uh, and I, I just didn't think about that. It was they started in November, um, but yeah. And we have a much more ambitious project than a lot of other games. Many of these, uh, many, many other games take many, many years to release, even an alpha. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's what we're saying. Uh... <laughs> Like if anyone thought that they would accomplish what they have promised in like one year from now, then uh, go read up on some game development projects. Uh, it, it can't happen. Like if, no, they need a really huge team and then you have the, the problem of a huge team that needs to be managed and it's not, uh, it's not necessarily making it faster like uh, one developer I was working with <laughs> like to say like uh, a pregnancy takes nine months and if you assign more women to it it will still take nine months <laughs> uh, I thought that was funny putting things into perspective it's no surprise that we haven't launched any 3d gameplay yet this is a long-term project Everybody's known this from the beginning, and I guess our stance on this is that we don't see a problem with laying foundations now for technology that can and will exist in the future. The I don't think anyone has... Well, some people are saying, like, you can't make a, a map like, that big. I'm seeing, like, if you could do, like, in the client, you only load the bit you're in. And then you only say on the server side, you only save like where these players have been and what, what buildings they have put in and stuff like, like that. Um, you're gonna run into problems when they place a lot, a lot of buildings because there's a lot of room on the earth because then you will have huge, part, huge data volumes to, to work with. But I think that's a luxury problem that could be solved probably um I, maybe there's something i don't see 
uh, with it, but uh, I've been thinking about it. Like if if you're <laughs> if you're in the game in your client, you you don't see you don't see the whole earth in detail. You only see uh, either you see the whole earth and you. you like it, it's when you're going uh, Google Earth, you have the whole Earth there in detail, but you don't see all of it in detail at the same time. And it's quite possible to have that, I think. Um, yeah. <laughs> the hardware technology is almost doubling in uh, its capabilities every few years at the moment. So there's no problem with us laying the foundation now and building tech that's going to be relevant and can be used with future hardware. It's quite perceptive of us, I believe, to be building this now. Um, and I love that we're sharing this journey with people who share that same vision and realize this. So before we're able to release any type of 3D gameplay, Oh, also, uh, my approach on that, like we only load one bit and they, you don't save on the server, like exactly uh, everything, is that you have some sort of seed to, to a randomizer that you use the same seed every time to generate, like here's, here's the trees and stuff. <laughs> so, um, I'm not saying it's easy, I'm just saying like for a game it could be done. Um, just like if I'm in Sweden I can't like see someone in Australia simultaneously as I see everyone in the entire world because it will be... Um, my screen isn't as big as the whole earth. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't see all that detail it will have to be zoomed out and then as soon as you zoom out you uh, you remove some details from what is being streamed to me and stuff like that um i think that's the only way to to resolve that but um i i would love to hear why i'm wrong uh because i am probably wrong because i haven't even attempted anything remotely like it like it so yeah we first need to get our platform in shape and ready. We have to set that foundation and that is the difficult part. It has been the difficult part. We've had very talented developers working on this solution. You you guys will get to... Wait, what solution is he talking about now? Some kind of platform? Uh, but it, it's nice to see him uh, saying like, yeah, there are difficulties for a change instead of what I've been hearing so far is like, we're awesome and you're stupid. Um, because that is not really fun to hear. And it doesn't really instill any confidence in that he actually knows what he's talking about. To see some of that in action on the video that we released this weekend, but it's still a work in progress. And we are still committed though, to making sure that we get. What video they released this weekend is uh, I saw that there was a new um, video from Earth 2 here uh, it's released 13 hours ago so yeah during the weekend but when was this released um, April oh but it wasn't he saying it in past tense and we are still committed though to making sure that we get version one out this year so people can actually see how it works and experience it firsthand. So we are committed to doing that. The 3D gameplay will come. It will come after that. There's no point in us introducing 3D gameplay. But why does it have to be two games? Why do you have this top down buying land, mining resources, trading, game essentially uh, only it's with real money but so it's a lot of game that is p pay to win so you can buy resources and stuff in a lot of game it's not unique in any way um so why why on top of that build another game that's what i don't get why do you build two games <laughs> like and is and is this first phase one 
game going to affect the, the phase three game? Like, is this, if there's hollow buildings, are those going to be there? And if there are um, mining facilities for phase, the phase one world where you could buy tiles now, like, is that going to be visible in, in the 3D game? And I don't, I don't understand. Or are you just planning on making this version of the game into a 3D game? I feel I'm very confused. Someone will tell me in the comments how wrong I am. Play if it isn't based on the entire one-to-one -one scale replication of the planet Earth. If wait, it wait, wait. On the, uh, there's no point in us introducing 3D gameplay if it isn't based on the entire one-to-one -one scale replication of the planet Earth. Why not? You have already shown us a square that isn't the entire world. So wh why can that be released as a game and then you just put the same mechanics on a, on a sphere? that is really, really big, but you only load in chunks or, you know, or you just load in that square as a chunk and then you load in the next and the next and it rolls over so that it's perceived as a planet. I, I don't understand a lot of things. If we did that, apparently. it's kind of like a catch 22 we'll get called out by the people who critique the project saying that it's not yeah. a one-to-one -one scale representation, representation of the planet Earth. So relevant of- Oh, oh yeah, like if, if you are going on, on and on about that Callum didn't make the entire Earth or like it wasn't a one-to-one -one representation of an area and you're going on and on about it's it has to be uh, a one-to-one -one thing about the entire earth yeah <laughs> I guess I guess it has to be but only if it's tied to this tile buying system otherwise I really don't see why you need to build a second game uh, as that Of what other people think like are you trying to make something that is technically cool or are you trying to make something that is fun to play because if you're making a game you need to know the answer to that one and if it if you're building something that is just technically cool and not care about how fun it is to, to play it's going to be a ghost town it still made sense to us to ensure that that platform, that foundation is created first. And this is the reason why we haven't been able to introduce 3D gameplay yet, because we needed to get our platform for the entire planet Earth ready perfectly. And it's not just like a one-to-one -one represent representation of the planet Earth. It's, it's also making sure that the the tiles the land that people have purchased making sure that they're accurately represented inside of that world it's making sure okay so it's going to be a one-to-one -one representation of the tiles of the tiles game so then you're basically turning the tiles game from 2d to 3d just so we're clear because it's not always really clear when you read the descriptions and stuff they are very there's a lot of floof <laughs> to wade through until you find the truth sure that like when you zoom in and out of the world that we have the maths operating correctly so when you're out you you know you see the world as a whole when you come in it slowly adjusts to the correct balance of how the earth to digital land platform is designed so there, there was a lot of work involved in the solution that we're creating and that's why it's taken a little bit of time before we can introduce that 3d gameplay i'm a gamer i i want i want 3d gameplay as much as everybody else i can't wait for it um, why what is going to be fun about your game just just because something is 3D it doesn't make it more fun than a 2D game. I play lots of 2D games, they're fun. You listed a lot of lot of um, 
2D games, side scrolling and, and stuff that that you played for hours and hours. Um, in fact, as a as a younger kid growing up, in every game that I played, I always wanted to go to that place in the background where you couldn't you couldn't get to the place where you're not allowed to go. That was always something. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's where he is very different from me. I was like, when I saw the first 3D games coming to console, I was like, who would want to play a platform game in 3D? It's going to be hard not to fall off the platforms. <laughs> that was very appealing to me. So I still remember as an adult when Zelda uh, Breath of the Wild, when that demo was shown by Nintendo um, of this open world feel coming to Zelda and uh, that just excited me beyond anything else I was so excited to to be able to play that game so Earth 2 I guess for me that was one of the big driving forces this open world same size as the planet Earth where you can go you can do things you can you know you can you can just keep traveling and find new areas like you know if you play Terraria you know you can load a 2D game. Different world, different size worlds. You can mine and you can build and you can find things. You can find... Why, why, why would he use Terraria as an example of why you would want to make a 3D game when Terraria is basically Minecraft only 2D? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Loot. But you always want to create that next world and see what's there. You create that next world and see what's in that one. Um, with Earth 2, it's just going to be this massive open world. And people will really start to understand how, how big that world is, I think, once they, once they are able to dive in and just experience it firsthand. So, Sure, it's cool with a big, big world, but... Here's the thing, like when you play World of Warcraft, that's a really, really big world. It's not the, the same size as the Earth, but it's big. It's like you can't like just run across it. Uh, and there's many, many areas and they're all beautiful and it's really cool. Uh, okay, the graphics aren't like fantastic, but it's a big world. That's the point. Um, thing is, every every single area there was handcrafted uh like decorations and trees and even the rocks and like everything the paths everything was put deliberately where they are and to have a good aesthetic feel or good aesthetic look to to them so if you're gonna make the entire earth there's no way you can have like artists do that. So you need to just procedurally generate the entire world until player comes in and like change stuff. So when I load into it and I like go to my hometown and then I go to the places I played when I was a kid in the forest where nobody goes, I'm sure, like in your game at, at least, um, it's gonna look wrong because the trees won't look right, you know, and um, Question is how wrong it's gonna going to look and it, is it going to be like just a generic forest? Like if you go to one forest and then another does it look exactly the same? Um yeah, so, so I see a lot of problems there and un unless, you know, you make it a strategy game that is like top down and sure it's going to be a, a cool that it's 3D, but will it really add to the game mechanic like just because it's 3D? I'm not sure. I can't wait for that to come this year, just so people actually gauge how how big this thing is and, and how amazing it's going to be. But again, 3D gameplay... Oh, also, the things that I just said I wanted to do, I was like, uh, 
you could just take um, a generator of land generator and put it into a game and then a user could like technically <laughs> they could enter coordinates I want I want to play in this area and the game could generate that area for you you don't have you don't need the entire earth around you <laughs> but so so what is cool about having that couldn't we couldn't release anything until we actually had the foundation and the platform right and having said that like when we launched Earth 2 we had an opportunity hang on I'm gonna close this door where we could just you know we could just shut things down and say okay you know one two years later you guys will see the next thing you'll you'll see the next parts or you'll get, be able to experience this gameplay um, in 3d from the beginning but I didn't want to do that I wanted to have the people who you know believed in the project who supported us the people who got in early I wanted to start releasing small parts of the gameplay that are going to then be relevant in the 3d world at a later stage so the people who are involved early they do get these benefits for playing and yes it's web yes it's 2d but you know jewels essence all of these things the resources that are coming soon all of these things are going to be very relevant in the 3d world when it comes And the players who are logging in and capturing these things and playing the game in 2D as it stands, you know, you guys are heroes. This is, this is leading up to something
big in the 3D world. So I wanted to provide that to the players. I wanted to provide that instead of providing nothing, I wanted to provide something that's leading up to this 3D world. And um, yeah, I just thought I'd share some of my thoughts here. I thought my screen went thing. Um, I thought I'd just share some of my. Uh, I just. thought I'd share some of my thoughts here for those who would like to listen and just understand why we haven't launched any 3D gameplay because essentially the gameplay that we have um, have coming in 3D it needs the whole one-to-one -one replication of the planet Earth to be able to work and if we didn't do that of course we'd get picked on for not doing that as well so anyway Hope that makes sense. Take care, keep safe, and I'll talk to you next time. Hello, I'm Peter. I'm
Hello, I'm Peter. I'm the developer of Horizon. Today I want to explain a little bit about what Horizon actually is, what it is good for, and the basic workflow. So here I have uh, a new project. I only have Horizon imported and Snazzy tools because I always like to have it in the project that's contained. Let's start the example scene. We hit play. This is what you get with Horizon out of the box. So that's the same uh, example scene as you see, you know, it from the web player. It all fits into a web player of 20 megabytes. Quite nice to use only 20 megabytes and get a, a huge scene like this with a view distance of 50 kilometers. Yeah, Horizon basically is a blank megabytes and get a, a huge scene like this with a view distance of 50 kilometers. Yeah, Horizon basically is a blanket um, that covers your entire scene. with a hole in the middle where your terrain is placed. So if you disable Horizon, Horizon basically only 20 megabytes and get a, a huge scene like this with a view distance of 50 kilometers. Yeah, Horizon basically is a blanket um, that covers your entire scene with a hole in the middle where your terrain is placed. So if you disable Horizon and track the difference, it looks like this. So here we have our terrain and From the beginning, 